I'm Bob Sendall, and when it's summertime and the living is easy, why not throw a fun paella party? I'll show you how to do it when we're cooking with Sendall style. From an early start in his family's bakery to cooking for world leaders, high society, and Hollywood stars, fresh, gourmet, simply elegant, here's Bob Sendall, now cooking and entertaining for you with Sendall style. One of the best parts of summer, of course, is having a summer party. If you like to invite your families, friends, neighbors. So today we'd like to talk about a paella party. I mean, what better than to have a group of friends over to watch you cook? And today we'd like to show you this paella. The paella is a classic Spanish dish, but it's also the name of the pan that we're actually going to be cooking the uh, paella in. We'll also talk about salads, dressings, and we're going to make a stuffed date that is going to be served with the salad. I'd like to introduce Chef Nick, who's been working with me for many years. Nick's gonna help me put this paella together, but most importantly, we have to do a prep, which is also called in the culinary world, the mise en place for the paella. So we'll start off today with the, uh, the meats. Uh, we're using a pork, a chicken, and then we're going to finish it off with clams, shrimps, and mussels. And of course, there's lots of rice and vegetables, but there is a great procedure for this. Mm -hmm. So Nick's gonna start grilling the meat uh, because once again, when you invite everyone for a paella party, you want them to be a part of this. So I'm going to start here with this pan, and this is the paella pan. So it's rather large, and you can actually have these and get them smaller. But we'd like to show you how to do a party for approximately 20, 25 people. The recipe might sound a lot, but it's once again very easy to do. Uh, so let's start off with, I've had the pan getting nice and hot. You can do this outside or if you have a turkey burner, you can sometimes put this outside on a turkey burner that has a, a propane gas tank that's attached to it. Or you can cook it on an industrial sized stove. Or if you have a stove that just has four burners, it can be done there. But it's, um, it's a little tricky, but you must figure that you should really figure out the pan and how the workings of the pan uh, is before you start cooking. It's to make sure that it fits your burners, understand how hot it gets, if you have hot spots on your stove or your grill. So as you can see, I'm coating the bottom of my pan that has already been getting nice and hot because you want to start this off with a, with a punch. And when I say with a punch, it's of course with onions. So I'm going to take a whole onion. Uh, we definitely want to ju julienne this nice and thin. And we also want to put some garlic in this, fresh tomatoes, roasted peppers. So all your preparation is done, of course, ahead of time, as you can see by the ingredients I have to my left. And we have lots of onions. As you can see, the pan is very nice and hot. You want to caramelize it. We're grilling the meats over here. The classic paella is done with the pork, the chicken, the sausage, and the chorizo sausage. We're doing it with sweet and hot uh, Italian sausage today, but we also are going to add some chorizo. Chorizo gives it that little kick that everybody enjoys. Uh, when caramelizing onions, you want to start out nice and hot. Keep them moving. You have to make sure you have enough olive oil. Now remember, this is going to be done in front of your guests. So you really want to have everything as nicely prepared and put out so that it's very easy to grab and you're able to um, ha make everybody a part of it. I don't recommend doing this um, too far ahead. But once again, it's more about the party. All right, so we have some garlic in there. Um, now, if you don't have um, uh, an outdoor grill, you can actually use one of the grills like we're using today, which is a flat grill that sits on top of the stove, gets very hot, and you can do it that way. But if you do have an outdoor grill, you can do this all ahead of time on that grill. 
All right. Now, what else goes into this dish is, of course, uh, the Valencia uh, style paella rice. Um, it's a short grain rice. It's very much like arborio rice, and it's a slow absorbent rice. So, because it takes a nice, it's like making a risotto. You want to cook it open, and you want it to nice. It cook very slowly, and it absorbs all the stock and everything as it cooks. All the flavors of the meat, and it blends very nicely. The next items would be, of course, the chicken, the pork, the chicken, the sausages, and then, of course, the chorizo. Later on, we're going to be adding shrimp, mussels, and clams. So the whole idea here is that you want to get your onions with some little bit of sweet flavor to them, which is caramelized. That looks great. I know. Beautiful. And I wish you could smell this because it, who doesn't love the smell of onions and garlic? If anything, that gets everybody's attention, is the smell of onions and garlic cooking. It's always kind of fun when you walk into someone's home and they have something cooking, and of course you smell garlic. It always tantalizes your taste buds. All right, so now uh, the next step, of course, would be the rice. Mm -hmm. So once again, we're adding a Valencia rice. It's a paella style rice. Please make sure that what you are using is a Valencia style rice, short grain rice. Uh, you do not want to use a medium grain or a long grain rice. We're not making um, a, a pilaf, so it's very important that you have the proper rice. It's a slow absorbent rice, and that's the mm -hmm. most important thing. So now what I'm doing is I'm adding the rice, but I want to rizole the rice. To, it's coat, gets coated with a little bit of fat, which is the olive oil. And as we do that, it also takes on some more flavor. So after the rice has all been coated, once again, that's called risole. It's a nice little coating of fat. The onions are nice and cooked. They're getting nice and brown. Okay, now is when you're going to add some tomatoes that have been uh, concassade, which are peeled, seeded, and diced. Some roasted peppers. You can hear it starting to get a little moisture in there. Mm -hmm. All right. Starting to look like paella. It is. And it's going to serve a lot of people. A little bit of white wine. And I'm definitely going to add my saffron. Now, saffron, of course, is the stamens of a crocus, and... And it's also the most expensive Benzo. part of paella. <laughs> I believe and it, re I mean, per ounce, it's, oh, it's a lot. hundreds of dollars. Yeah, It's a lot, but I don't like to be skimpy on it. And we're gonna do some white wine. If you spin your bottle, you don't have to work, wait for it to come out too slow. Good. So the, the white wine is added, so that's your first liquid that you're adding to the paella. So what you don't want it to, it's going to evaporate, and it's going to start cooking into it, but you don't want it to get too dry, so you're going to have to have your chicken stock and everything ready and ready to go. But the next items are going to be the chicken. Now Nick was grilling everything, but we've done that ahead of time, so we're going to add our, our shredded chicken. Some pork, you can use the pork loin for that. You're gonna add your sausages. So don't forget that this is, I would call this like making a chicken pot pie or a meatloaf. It's so regional and it's so personal mm -hmm. that in the Spanish traditions, people do, they add rabbits, they add calamari, they. Uh, some put pheasant in it. It's, it's all totally up to you, but this is our recipe that we find is the most well-received and most enjoyed. Now I'm just adding everything in. I don't want to stir it up too much yet. I just want to get it cooking. And now I'm going to start adding my stock. I'm going to 
Add a little salt and pepper. And a little more salt. And my chicken stock. That's Just chicken good. stock. All right. Just to get it started. And then I finish it with some nice little haricot vert or you can use summer green beans. Now, this is the trick here, is you really need to cover it. So you can cover it with foil. We often just take another paella pan, which you might not have. So you can always do it with foil and we will start cooking it slowly. Turn the heat down a little bit and away it goes. So while you're checking this and adding some tomatoes, you want to move this around because you don't want it to be burning on the bottom for any, if you maybe, pans are often warped and have little highs and low spots to them. So you just really want to feel it and you want to feel if it's dry anywhere. It doesn't matter if the rice takes on a little color, but you don't want it to really burn and get that burnt flavor. So you have to be careful with it. And you also want to make sure that there's enough liquid at all given times here so that it cooks properly. So I've added some tomato. I'm going to add a little bit more stock to it. And we're going to let this cook for probably, oh, a good uh, six to ten minutes on this. And then we'll come back to it. And there's, that's when we'll start adding our shellfish, our shrimp, and, of course, the clams and mussels. Now we're going to start and we're going to make a pesto vinaigrette for the salad that we're going to serve with the paella. So of course everybody has basil growing in your garden. I have tons of it and I enjoy it because we make lots of pesto through the summer. And another nice little hint is that you can freeze it and keep it for the rest of the year if you grow lots of basil. So it's two cups of basil, fresh leaves, that we're putting into a food processor. Now, most people make pesto and they put cheese and they put nuts and they put all this other. We like to make pesto uh, where we just do basil, garlic, and olive oil. And the reason we do that is because it's nice. Then you can add anything to it as you prefer. So for this particular recipe, we just like the pesto or the basil with the garlic. So we call that pesto. So now that the pesto and the garlic are all pureed in there and chopped, we're going to start adding the olive oil. While the um, machine is running, once again, we don't add the cheese and the nuts that's in a classic pesto because we like to, we like to use the pesto for multiple purposes. And as you see it, it's, it's more liquefied for this dressing. So I'm now going to kick this over to Nick and let him show um, how we're going to stuff a date, wrap it with pancetta, and then grill them. They're really quite they awesome. They are delicious. Incredible. We have these beautiful, beautiful medjool dates. Um, I believe you brought these back from California. Correct. And they're gorgeous. They're so sweet. So basically, when you have them, you want to check and make sure they're plump. You don't want a dry date. So once you have it, you just lightly open it up, and you'll see a pit. A little seed, you'll remove that, and then kind of leave it as whole as you can. And once we have, I'm probably going to do about 20 of these or so, we're going to rip off a nice piece of blue cheese. This is imported gorgonzola. It's delicious. It's nice and creamy. You don't want a dry blue cheese here. And you just kind of put a little in there, fill those up, and we're wrapping with pancetta. Pancetta is kind of cured with a little allspice, cloves, some salt. It's one of those meats that it's okay to eat raw. It's not going to hurt you. Um, we still have our grill pan on. It's on medium heat. And we just kind of let those chill out there. Um, they'll get nice and brown. And that cheese will start to ooze out. And I have to tell you guys, these are so delicious. I could probably 
I, I could probably eat about six of them myself. Um, <laughs> it has that sweet, creamy, cheesy, just incredibly delicious. I mean, when you see these things and they start oozing out, I mean, you can kind of look right there and see all that beautiful cheese coming out. So when you get to the point where it's ready to add the shrimp, your rice should be, as you can see, it is, I've been moving this around a little bit. Um, everything's starting to take on a really nice yellow color from the saffron. You can smell the saffron. It smells delicious in here. So now I'm going to add the mussels and clams right on top. And then, of course, the shrimp. The last one. And then you can move them around. So you want to work the shrimp and shells down into the paella because they're going to steam from all the, of course, all the cooking that is going on here. And it's, you can see nice and, the heat at the bottom of the pan is starting to get the rice nice and crispy at the bottom, which is not bad. We're going to add a little salt and pepper. and we're going to cover it again. And we're gonna let that rest for a little bit. So while the paella is cooking, I'm going to make a pesto vinaigrette, which will then be, of course, the dressing that we put onto the salad. Pesto, summer, a party outside, it all works together. So I'm gonna add a little bit of the pesto, by four tablespoons of the pesto that we just made. A little bit of Dijon mustard. Your recipe, of course, is on the website that you'll be able to get. A Little bit of sherry vinegar. About equal amounts of pesto to the sherry vinaigrette. The recipe, I believe, is four tablespoons of each. Some shallots, some minced garlic, now remember, you had some garlic in the pesto, so if you don't like the extra garlic, you don't need to add it. Uh, we're gonna put a little bit of walnut oil. Now walnut oil is quite interesting. Some people like it, some don't, but uh, we like it because it gives it a nice little nutty taste. You don't have to use walnut oil. And then of course, just a good, regular, um, extra virgin olive oil. Um, a good Spanish style olive oil would be great, of course, for this, but if you have a favorite of your own, definitely use it. Good, it's nice and green, it's wonderful, has a great flavor. Add a little salt, a little pepper. Now the best thing about this uh, pesto vinaigrette is it can rest. You can use this on, just put on a little bit of fish before you grill it, you can do it on chicken before you grill it, you can use it in your salad, you can put it on a little uh, a pasta dish, a cold pasta dish if you want to. So it's a very multi-purpose recipe that's great in the summertime when you have all that basil in your garden again. I want to taste this. Yum. The basil is amazing in this. Now I want to check on my paella again. See how it's cooking. Now remember, you want to keep moving this around. Now some of the shrimp are starting to cook. Some of the clams and mussels are starting to open. So you definitely want to get the, this all mixed up so that it cooks. And if you need to add a little more stock, you can. At this point, you're getting some liquid from the mussels, you're getting liquid from the shrimp. So you might, you should have enough liquid in this, but if you need to, you can add a little bit more. I'm gonna add just a little bit more stock. Now I'm going to put the lid back on, let this cook a little longer, and we're gonna start working on our salad with that delicious pesto vinaigrette served with the dates, and starting to smell yummy around here.
And of course, since we have such a large paella, we need to make a salad that goes with it to feed the masses. So we're thinking that this paella is gonna serve around 20 some people. So we need, um, thanks Nick, let me You're have welcome. this nice sized bowl. And we have a nice assortment of greens for uh, the salad. Now, of course you can take these out of your garden if you have them, or you go to your local farmer's market, wherever you do it. And you want a nice assortment of nice summer greens. So you can see all the beautiful greens. And always remember, when you're making a salad, don't, you know, smash it. Always lift and make the salad nice and light and airy. So we're going to add some shredded fennel to this. And now we're going to add some julienne of carrots. You could also put parsnips in there, sliced radishes. Um, it's really a summer salad, so however you like to, uh, whatever you like to put in the salad. Once again, very light. We're tossing it. Now, I always like to wait for the last minute to, to toss a salad. I don't like to put a dressing on the table and let people put too much dressing on it. But once again, you want to taste the salad greens. You don't necessarily, the dressing is to enhance the greens, not to overpower it. So I'm going to add a little bit of pesto vinaigrette, um, just a little bit. Now remember, this vinaigrette is pretty potent. It's nice and, it has lots of garlic in it, so you don't want to overpower the lettuce with it. And you can see, I'm going to add a little bit of salt and pepper. And I'm just lightly tossing it. Remember, aerate your salad. So I guess this bowl really isn't too big, see? <laughs> I've just lightly coated the salad. And that's all I'm mixing it, very light. I'm going to put this on the side and we're going to finish our paella. So I'm going to check the paella once more. I believe we should be about ready for service. Yes. Now you can see the clams and the mussels have opened up. The shrimp is cooked. And this, my friends, is what you call a finished paella, ready for service. Uh, most importantly, I want to give it a taste. So we're going to do that to see if it needs a little bit more salt and pepper, but often it doesn't because of all the salt and everything that are already in the meats. Now we want to check for the rice, of course, to be done. I like it if the rice has a little bit of crunch to it. Um, This is perfect. So I'm going to take this off. We're going to serve it with the salad. And once again, welcome to our summer party. And we're featuring the paella. So when hosting a party, always remember you want to make sure everything is ready before your guests get here. So I have the paella table ready. I have the bar ready. We've set a beautiful table. The candles are lit. Napkins are folded perfect. And we're now ready to receive guests. Looking forward to everyone coming. <laughs> now that is the perfect paella. I mean, it really had to choose. So when having a summer paella party, we decided to serve a sangria. All right, this is a white sangria. Uh, we use a bottle of white wine, squeeze fresh lemon juice, fresh lime juice, fresh oranges, slice the peaches, blueberries, strawberries, and then peel an orange and add it as well. And then top it off with a little club soda. So we're also doing yummy summer Cosmo. And they're so big, look at them, and the birds. See the butterflies? Yep, right there. See? I can see them. Tomorrow. No, that's a butterfly. <laughs> These are the grilled dates wrapped in bacon at the studio. We did them on a grill pan, but we're outside. Let's do them on the outside grill. A lot of smoke. Perfect. Easy cheese. We just took these off the grill, and of course, I'm going to pass them, and everyone has to try. A date wrapped in bacon with a little gorgonzola cheese. Oh, wow. I'm going to go get the paella because I think it's ready. Yay. Is anybody hungry? Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. The paella. Wow. And always put a little fresh parsley on it. Yes. We're ready to serve. We have a fresh, beautiful salad with a pesto vinaigrette and some beautiful chives. We have the paella, always served with two spoons. And, you know, you always want to make sure everybody gets a great portion. And who doesn't like those big, beautiful shrimp on there? A more. Oh, thank you. You had to get a mouthful in there. Oh, absolutely. To all of you, my dearest and nearest, and what a gorgeous night. All right, let's eat up and enjoy. Don't forget, save room for dessert. <laughs>So tonight we're having a summer pudding. Dessert that only can be done in the summer. You take a bowl, you line it with plastic wrap, line it with either bread or a pound cake. You take fresh strawberries, fresh raspberries, a little bit of simple syrup, a little lemon rind, a little Cointreau, and it sits overnight and it becomes the most beautiful balm. And you can see the most gorgeous fresh raspberries. And we're gonna serve it with a little bit of creme fraiche. Well, here's to a great summer evening, wonderful paella party, and we want to thank you for being with us and looking forward to more entertaining and cooking with Sendal style. Let's get on to our dessert. Yeah. Yeah.